Okay, so our next uh, material that we're going to look into, um, so for topic uh, 4.2e, is textiles. And a textile is any type of cloth or woven fabric. So that's what we're looking at here is cloth or woven fabrics. Okay, and there are basically two types. We've got natural and synthetic. Okay, and synthetic means that it's made by man. When you see this word synth, whenever you see that, it means that it's made, um, it's not made naturally. And then we've got natural uh, fibers, which make a natural type of cloth. Okay, so these are the types of cloth that you have. Um, we have, on this side, we've got all our natural cloths and where they're from. So basically up here, what we're looking at is plant-based um, fabrics. So, you know, some of these you're, you're familiar with, um, like for instance, flax, flax makes um, uh, linen, and that's from basically the, um, the stem of the plant. We've got seed hairs, so that's things like cotton. We've got proteins. These are basically going to come from animals, and so this is your whole wool area over here. And then we've got things like filaments, which are things like uh, silk, so silkworm silk. And then we can also have natural um, fibers that are made out of things like minerals, so rocks. Uh, asbestos is a type of fiber that's that. Okay, we've got on this side our manufactured um, uh manufactured fabrics. So these are going to come from um, different things. So for instance, if they're inorganic, they might come from glass, like fiberglass or metal. And sometimes you'll see in like really old uh, paintings or, you know, back in the medieval times, people would use like gold thread in their clothes and it would literally be made out of gold. So you could have metallic uh, threads for things like that. Um, and then you've got your whole sets of, of tons of different um, synthetic fibers. We're really going to focus on nylon here and polyester, but any of these are also, you know, these are all synthetic polymers that, uh, that create these. Okay, so let's look at the different materials. So when we look at natural, so this is natural, um, natural fibers. Okay, so uh, that's a material produced by a plant or an animal that can be spun into a thread, rope, or filament, okay? And they have lots of great properties. For instance, they, uh, well, maybe that this isn't a great property, but they, you know, natural fibers are, uh, they're flammable. They're easy to dye because they, they have good absorbency. This word right here, hydrophilic, when you see hydro, that always means water, and philic, when you see philic, this means that uh, it's like love, okay? So this loves water, right? So they like uh, water. That means they're going to be easy to dye. They're, they don't have great resilience. That means they're not really going to stand the test of time. They break down quite easily. And in fact, uh, you know, the archaeological record on fabrics is quite poor because quite literally they break down over time. They just, you know, natural processes are going to break them down because they're natural products. So bacteria and fungus and things like that will uh, destroy them. Um, so actually cloth from, from ancient times is very rare. Um, they can be attacked by mildew. So mildew is a type of fungus and that, that can cause them to break apart. It goes back to this resilience. They're dimensionally stable though. They're, they don't stretch very easily um, and they'll return to their, uh, their form when they, when, so that's, that's good. And they're uh, good conductors of electricity. And we already mentioned that they absorb water. Okay, so the first um, type of textile we're going to look at, um, natural textile, is wool. So this is a natural fiber, and it comes from hair. So essentially, this is wool right here. And you can see an electron micrograph of some different fibers right here. This is um, sheep's wool. This is another type of sheep's wool. This is alpaca, which is like a llama. This is cashmere. It comes from like a goat. This is silk. So silk comes from the silkworm. Linen, this is from a plant and cotton also from a plant, and then lastly polyester. And you can see the polyester has the sort of most uniform look to it. Wool is literally made up of scales that are sort of stacked together in a hair. Um, and so these four right here are made that way. This is essentially extruded from the um, abdomen of a silk worm. And so we'll talk a little bit about that when we get to the uh, silk section. Okay, cotton. Cotton is a the hair of a seed, so this is the cotton plant right here, and this fiber right here is basically what this fiber looks like. So it's twisted um, fiber, and so it makes great thread. Um, it's breathable. It's got all kinds of great uh, properties. Okay, so but this is where cotton comes from. It's from the seed hairs. Linen, 
Linen is this fiber right here. It comes from the flax plant, and this is what flax looks like. So it's a, basically a green stocky plant. And what you're doing is you're actually extracting the phloem or bast. And this is the inner part of the bark. It's actually right here where you see this BF. So it's this layer right here. And what you're doing is extracting those fibers. And that's the phloem of the, of the plant. Okay. Uh, silk. Silk is spun from silkworm cocoons, so the silk, um, silk moth, so the silk caterpillars will spin a very long fiber, um, and it's, it looks like this from their abdomen. Okay, that takes us to our synthetic fibers. So first thing down here, I'm going to go down to the bottom, you can see it says that they're hydrophobic. That means they do not like water. Right? Hydro means water, phobic means fear of, so they're not going to like water. And that makes them difficult to dye. But they do resist mildew because they're not natural, so nothing likes to eat them. Um, they have good resilience. That means they're going to be around for a long time. So, you know, 500 years from now, people will be finding our clothes and going, hey, look at what they wore back in, you know, 2020. And they'll know because those fibers will still be around um, because nothing can eat them. Uh, they have thermoplasticity, that means that they can be melted and reformed, and they're not very dimensionally stable. That means you could stretch out uh, these fabrics pretty easily. So that's something to pay attention to when you're thinking about textiles. Okay, so this is nylon. So nylon is uh, a type of textile. It's drawn from the interface of two different chemicals. It's basically an acid and this hexamethylene diamine okay and, and you can watch a video about how they make it and literally that's the nylon fibers right there that they're pulling out of this chemical reaction down there it's kind of interesting polyester is another um, fiber that's uh, man-made uh, I'm not going to try and pronounce these because they're a mouthful but basically you're mixing together a couple of different types of chemicals and you get a, a nice fiber out of that which is called polyester and you're used to polyester this is what your your couch seats are made out of this is what your car seats if they're fabric car seats are made out of um, people don't generally wear polyester straight usually you mix it with some other fiber like usually cotton polyester blends are a big thing and that's something that that to consider about all of these fibers is that often when you see them they're actually blended together, so you know something to pay attention to there is that the usually you're not seeing just one type of fiber in, in any sort of garment, any piece of clothing. There'll be multiple types of fi fibers within the cloth. Okay, once you have the fibers, what you have to do is spin them into something called yarn. And so yarn is a long, continuous length of interlocking uh, synthetic or natural fibers. And here's a a video about how they spin cotton yarn. So it's something uh, to pay attention to. It's something that um, is very ancient. So people have been spinning yarn for thousands and thousands of years. And in fact, if you look at the flag of India, what they have on it is actually a, a spinning wheel for spinning yarn. Okay, but go ahead and watch this. You can see how they make cotton cloth or yarn, sorry. Okay, now once you have yarn, you need to make it into cloth. And there's a couple of ways to do that. So one of the ways is knitting. So knitting is a method of converting yarn into a fabric by creating consecutive rows of interlocking loops. Uh, this is called warp knitting. And with warp knitting, what you get is this sort of zigzaggy pattern where the fibers are interlocked, but they're interlocked in a zigzaggy way. Whereas there's something called weft netting, uh, knitting, which... Um, create stitches, but they're, they're loops, and they loop in, in more like a row. So this is a weft knitting, and this is warp knitting. Okay, um, another way that we get cloth is weaving. So this is the act of making a sheet of material by interlocking the long threads passing from one direction to the other at right angles. And, and go ahead and watch this. This is, again, something that is very ancient. Uh, they'll show you the process, but now we use industrial looms. Um, so this is, uh, you know, what, what, what happens today, but it, you, you can see in the video, he'll show you a good example of how, uh, weaving occurs. Okay. We got lace making. So this is when you create decorative fabric that is woven in symmetrical patterns or figures. And this is an example of lace right here. 
Okay, and then we have something called felting. So felting is when you convert yarn into fabric by matting the fibers together. You're essentially just kind of squishing them together and they become sort of like just mixed together in a, in a mat. And that's what felt is. It's, it's probably the oldest type of fabric that we have. Um, but uh, yeah, go ahead and watch this. It'll show you how they make felt. All right, thanks for watching, guys.